In this video, we'll start creating together our first simple 2D game. We still have a few more C-sharp concepts to discuss, but I believe that the best way to do that is by creating a game and talking about an example that is actually relevant to a game in Unity. In the description of this video, you'll find a link to the starter project. This is my post on Patreon, and you can download the Unity package called c -sharp Essential Starter Project SVS. So just download it. This is a Unity package containing the starter project, so you can just double click on it. It will show you an additional import Unity package window, and you can see that we are importing here some scenes, some fonts, and some other assets that we are going to use to create our game. Alternatively, in Unity, you can go to the top menu, select Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and here you can select the file that you have downloaded and click Open in the bottom right corner. In the Import Unity Package window, just click Import. This package contains graphics and sounds, so we can focus only on coding our logic for our game. We will be using a Tiny Dungeon Asset Pack by Kenny. So after you import the package to your Unity project, you should see in the Projects tab that we have some additional folders like materials, prefabs, scripts. There are some additional scripts that you can explore on your own, but they are helper scripts that we are going to just use to add animations to our game sounds, sprites, and tile maps, and the most important part is in the scenes folder, which since we have added here a game scene. So save your scene, the original one, by going to file and save or just clicking Ctrl S, and next go to the project tab scenes folder and select the game scene and double click on it, and you should see our game scene appearing. If you press play, you should see that our character is being animated and there is some music in the background. We are not going to explore how this scene was set up because the point of this tutorial is to teach you the essentials of C-Sharp. That said, I think it is much more exciting to be looking at the graphics of a game. The first task will be to make our character move. In your Unity project, we already have one script weapon, so I'm going to just drag it into the scripts folder to keep uh, my project organized. I will open the scripts folder. Again, you can see some recompilation going on in the background. But now what we need to do is create a new script that will drive our player's behavior. So can you remember how to create a new script in Unity? Pause the video if you want to try it on your own, but we just need to right click, create, and select the c -sharp script. And I'm going to call this player. And uh, let's press enter to create this script. When it is ready, just double click on it to open it in Visual Studio. Here is our script and the first thing that we want to do is get the player input. The basic way to do it is using input class from Unity and there is something called get axis row. This method returns as minus one, zero on one, depending on if you are moving left or down or up or to the right or not moving at all, which is zero. And since this is a documentation page for input.getAxisRow method, there usually is some example. So in the update, we need to assign uh, the speed to be input.getAxisRow and we pass a string value called horizontal. Before we can add this code to our own script, what is this horizontal parameter that we pass here? In Unity, you can go to the top menu, select Edit, Project Settings, and you will see a column on the left with a lot of categories. You can select the input manager here and you will see the input manager and there is a drop down list of axes and here is the horizontal axis and vertical axis. For example, vertical is down and up while horizontal is left and right. Now we also have this uh, warning or information. This is where you can configure this and consider using a new input system package instead. Unity has introduced a new input package and they recommend that we use that one. But we are learning c -sharp Essentials, so we are not interested really in the package, but how to write c -sharp code. So let's stick with the old way to get input, and I'll show you the new way at the end of this video series. Okay, so how do we add it to our script? Well, we need to go to our update method, and here we are going to type float. Just like in the example, we are going to call this horizontal input with capital I equals input with capital I dot get with capital G, axis with capital A, and raw with capital R. And we are going to open the parentheses, and we need to pass here the name of the axis. So this is a bit tricky because we need to have quotation marks because this is a string type variable, and we are going to type with capital H horizontal. 
and we need to put the semicolon at the end. Let's copy this line of code, Control C, and let's paste it just below. So enter and place it by Control V. And we are going to change this horizontal to vertical. And we are going to change the input get axis row, the string here, to be uh, vertical. So the first one will get us the left and right arrow input. And the second line will get us the up and down input. We can access this input and the get axis row method on it because we have this using unity engine statement at the top. The tricky part is working with a string data type. This is because if I type the word incorrectly missing an L here, if you assign our player to a, an object in hierarchy and run our game, you're actually going to see argument exception input axis horizontal is not set up. So the problem with string data types as arguments is that it is very easy for us to make a mistake typing the specified name. So in our script, I have mentioned that I have made a mistake here, I'm going to correct it. But here I have also said that this is a string type, but we have not assigned it to a variable. We have just typed it as an argument here directly and we have not saved it anywhere. So one way to fix the issue if we have made a mistake is to actually go to the top of our player class and create a uh, square bracket serialized with capital S and we can use IntelliSense enter to fill in the name serialized field and I'm going to create create private string horizontal and we are going to type a capital A axis and we are going to assign it to the name that we have given uh, below so horizontal I'm going to select it Control X and Control V here. And actually to define another string value, I'm going to just add a comma here and I'm going to type vertical axis with capital A equals and I'm going to just cut the vertical name here from update, control X and control V to assign it to our vertical axis uh, variable. And I'm going to finish it with a semicolon. And now to fix our update method, since we have this red squiggly line here, I'm going to just type horizontal in the parentheses. And we can, we can see that we have the intelligence showing us the horizontal axis variable. I'm just going to press enter and I'm going to type in the uh, get axis, the second line vertical, and we can press enter to fill it in. And now if we make a mistake, we can fix it through the inspector instead of going through the code and fixing their names. By the way, the convention of calling those variables is using camel case. So with the first letter is lowercase letter, and the first letter of the next word is using the capital letter as the first letter. So we have this camel case. Another thing that we as programmers do for convenience is to add underscore before the private variables so that we know that those are private variables that should not be modified because they are relevant for the player. So I'm just going to uh, change the names to have underscore before those because this way if I start typing underscore IntelliSense will give me all the private variables first so I have easier time accessing those. Okay, save your script and go back to Unity. Great. Now we have our player script. Do you remember what we did to instantiate our script into an object? So what we did to create an object of type player? A small hint is that we have already a player object in the hierarchy but it is missing something. Well, if you said we need to drag the player script onto the player object, you are correct. So let's do just that. We can drag it onto the player on into the inspector when the player is selected. Both actions will, will result in adding the player script to our player object. And you can already see our string variables horizontal and vertical. And we can modify those as well. So I can add A, but I want to keep it as horizontal. Because now if we try pressing play, no errors should appear or if you have some you need to modify the names and rerun your game but we also can't really do anything if i press arrow keys or WASD, nothing really happens this is because we have captured the input from the player keyboard but we haven't used it to do anything if you stop the game uh, you will see that the player object has another component called rigid body 2d rigid body 2d is a component in unity and adding a rigid body component to a sprite puts it under control of physics engine. We will use this component to make our character move and additional to that we are going to get the benefit of collision detection because we are using physics based movement. What we need to do now is get the values from update so horizontal and vertical input and pass it to our rigid body object. And to do that we need to create a serialized field at the top of our script and we are going to type private 
rigid body with, with capital R. And we need to type 2D because we are working into this space. Let's call it underscore RB2D. Remember about the semicolon at the end. Now in Unity to interact with uh, the physics calculations, we need to use something called fixed update, which is again a method from mono behavior and we are inheriting mono behavior in our script. And this is a frame rate independent uh, fixed update message for physics engine. And again, if we slide down, we can see that we have this uh, update and we have also this fixed update method. So in our script, we can delete the start method by selecting it all and pressing backspace and we can create a fixed Let's type update with capital U and we should already see fixed update IntelliSense. Let's press enter and IntelliSense should provide us with a definition of our method. And again, this is from the mono behavior. So this will run automatically. To make our character move, we are going to use rigidbody 2 dot velocity property, which is a vector two linear velocity of a rigid body in units per second. And in the example below, we can see that in the update method, we are setting the rigid body uh, to dot velocity to a new vector 2, but it is safer to use fixed update for any kind of interactions for the rigid body 2D, as if we select add force, for example, in the example, we are going to see it applied in the fixed update. And this is why we are going to also follow this practice. Okay, back in our script, we have already created this fixed update method. And we already have this rigid body 2D reference RB 2D with an underscore. Now, do you remember how we have accessed methods and variables on other objects from our scripts? Try typing this code in the fixed update method on your own. I hope that you have typed underscore RB 2D dot velocity. If you did, great job. Now, what we had in the example was equals new vector 2. And this is another type from Unity, a struct and it represents a 2D vector, and we can see the constructor that ta it takes X and Y values as two parameters in between those parentheses. But can you see the problem right now? We have those values in the scope of the update, so how can we pass them to the fixed update method? Well, this is kind of why I wanted to use fixed updates to show you this issue. Remember how we did share variables between methods? Well, we have used the global variables inside the player class scope. So what we need to do is in the update, we are going to actually create a vector two. But if we do that vector two uh, input equals new vector two, and we are going to pass the horizontal input and vertical input, we are again at the square one because we cannot really access this variable. So what we need to do is take this control C and I'm going to go up to the uh, scope of our class. I'm going to create a private this time variable and I'm going to paste vector to input. I'm going to add underscore before it and I'm going to add a semicolon. And now I can use this variable by passing it in the update underscore input. And I can now take this input and pass it to the fixed update velocity equals to under underscore input and semicolon. Great. Now we already have a bug here. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Just let's save our script, control S. Let's go back to Unity. Okay, if you have saved the script and you have it already on the player object, we have this rigid body 2D component already here. So to add it to our player, we can either drag the player object from the hierarchy to the rigid body 2D field, or I can drag it to the uh, from the rigid body here. Now notice that by default, it was set to be non, but our vertical axis was already set to be vertical. We are going to talk about nulls, reference and value types in the next video. For now, just know that you can assign a player or the rigid body component directly here. And now we should be able to press play. Okay, now if you use your arrow keys, you should see that the character is moving, but pretty slowly. But if you try pressing up and right arrow at the same time, you should see that the character is moving much faster. And that's the bug that we have. Okay, that is a great start. Let's go to the next video where we are going to improve our game and uh, get to know more C-sharp concepts that are relevant to Unity games. See you in the next video.